guys, this is Kelly Chappelle, and thanks for tuning into this video about quiz question number seven from quiz four in Physics 235, Spring Term 2015. I thought this quiz question was particularly challenging because it required you to have a good understanding of the Biles Savart law, which is a law that explains how magnetic fields are created by current moving through a wire. You kind of a complicated uh, case of the Biles Savart law, and then also make some assumptions based on what this question was asking to actually figure out the solution. So let's start out by just doing a quick reminder of what the Biles Savart law actually is and what it's saying. So it says that dB, which is a vector, um, this is the changing uh, magnetic field at a particular point, equals mu naught, which is the permeability of free space, that's just a constant, over 4 pi times i times ds cross r, just so you know this little dot this does not represent a dot product, but this cross is a cross product of these two, of these two, one over r squared. So what does this mean? This is just, uh, explains the strength of the magnetic field at a particular point. This just says the uh, magnetic field falls off like 1 over r. The reason why it's 1 over r and not 1 over r squared is because we take the integral to find the magnetic field. Uh, and then this is just the vector, uh, the vector sum of all these different points. So let's look at what that means in the context of the infinite line approximation because that is the approximation that's relevant in this case. So let's say that I have an infinite line like this and I want to know, um, and I have a current flowing through this, I have a current flowing through this, let's just think of it as a wire. And I want to figure out what is the magnetic, what is the net magnetic field here at point P due to the current moving through this wire. Well, what we do is we look at just a tiny part of the wire, which we're just going to call a DS for right now. And we are going to draw a line between DS and point P. Let me do that. Oops. Okay. And this, we're going to call this the radius r. And as we move along and do all these ds's, we're going to figure out what the contribution of this tiny, tiny piece of the wire is to the magnetic field at point P. And then we sum up all those tiny pieces to find the net amount of magnetic field at point P. So uh, let's figure out what the bios of our law would be in the case of the infinite line approximation. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to define a couple more variables. So um, I'm going to call this r little r, but I'm going to do another r right here. Okay, and that is just the line that's normal to the wire and point P. And I'm going to call this one big R. And then I'm going to just define a couple of other variables. I'm going to call this distance between ds and that normal line. That's going to be s. Uh, and then I'm going to define a couple of these angles. This angle is going to be theta. And this angle is going to be phi. So we have all of the things we need to know here. And then uh, we let's first figure out the direction of the magnetic field at point P. And in order to do that, we just use the uh, the right hand rule and the the type of right hand rule that we're going to use is the straight curve rule so what we do is we put our thumb in the direction of the current and we're going to wrap our fingers around it and figure out what direction our fingers are pointing at point P and that will be the direction of the magnetic field so if I was going to draw what my hand is doing right now my thumb is going like this and my fingers are curling around in this direction okay this is like a really terrible picture of a hand but hopefully you'll get the idea. My fingers are curling around in this direction, okay? Going like this, and this is the direction of the current, and this is the direction of the magnetic field. So you can see here at point P, my fingers are actually pointing into the page, so that means that the magnetic field at point P will be into the page or in the negative K direction if we want to use unit vectors. All right, so let's actually figure out the magnitude of the magnetic field at that point, okay? So let's start out with what we know. We know the bios of our law, which is I've already written right here, so I'm not going to rewrite it. And let's figure out how to do this cross product in terms of, uh, in terms of like magnitudes and, uh, and angles. So we can rewrite this as mu naught over 4 pi times i times the magnitude of ds times the magnitude of r hat times sine of theta over r squared. Uh, now we want to figure out the magnitude. We know the magnitude of a unit vector is just one. 
So we can just make this go away. Now we want also the sine of theta to go away because this, this, this is theta and that looks like rather challenging. So let's just figure out how we can rewrite that. Oops, not, don't want to edit my colors quite yet. So we know that sine of theta is going to be the same thing as sine of phi because these two uh, add up to 180. And what is sine of phi? Well, that is simply big R, which is the opposite, over little r, which is the hypotenuse. So we can sub that back into this uh, equation right here. But before we do that, let's do one other thing. Let's figure out what this little r is. So let's grab the right color. We know from trigonometry that r is going to equal the square root of s squared plus big R squared uh, because of the Pythagorean theorem. So now, with that in mind, let's sub this all back in here. So if we want to write a new, a new equation for dB, we could write it as I times the magnitude of ds times big R over, uh, oops, I forgot the mu naught, excuse me, 4 pi times s squared plus r squared to the what? To the 3 halves, exactly. Okay, sorry, that looks a little bit messy, but that gets the point across. So this is going to be our new equation for how the magnetic field changes due to all of these little ds's, or due to one little ds at a particular time based on these variables. So let's take a look at this question with this in mind. Oh, before we move on, if you wanted to actually figure out what the magnetic field was at all of these ds's across the wire, you would just integrate this. And just for posterity, I'll just write the result here that um, the magnetic field due to an infinite line for the entirety of the wire is just mu naught i over 2 pi r. Because when we integrate, that's what this comes out to. All right, but let's take a look back at what's going on over here. So this question says, a very short wire is located at the origin and carries a current uh, 2.46 amps in the direction shown in the diagram. What is the magnetic field of the point with coordinates given by 3, 5? All right, so I think the first thing, so this is a multiple choice question, and the easiest way to narrow down our possibilities in order to make it more probable that we get the right answer is to figure out the direction of the magnetic field here at 3, 5. So that's really easy because all we do is, again, use the straight curve rule. And so I'm going to put my thumb in the direction of this arrow, and I'm going to wrap my fingers around. Okay, so if I was going to draw my what's going on with my hand using the straight curve rule, I would do something like this. So my thumb is going this way. My fingers, let's see, I'm trying to look at my hand and also accurately draw it here. My fingers are going kind of like this. That's not really a great drawing of my fingers here. Uh, so here at point 3.5, it is going into the board. Okay, so here's current. Here is the magnetic field. So we know that the direction of the magnetic field here at 3, 5 is going to be in the negative k hat direction. Alternatively, uh, we could do this with, um, I don't know, let's not do it with univectors. Let's just, let's just do this for right now. All right, because we're, we're going to get there in a second. All right, so let's think about what this question is really asking. We have a very short piece of wire, and we want to figure out how the, magnetic, how the magnetic field is here at this point due to that tiny, tiny piece. Well, that sounds a lot like what a little ds is doing here at point P. So we can use this approximation, the infinite wire approximation, to figure that out. Now, the next question is, do we use this equation or this equation? Well, this equation is the the tiny amount of, of the magnetic field is contributed by a tiny piece, and this equation is used to understand the amount of magnetic field due to the entirety of the wire. So the equation that we're going to use in this equation, or in this problem, is going to be this one. And we've already defined what all of our variables are. So now we understand what the question is asking. What is the magnetic field due to this tiny, tiny piece, which we're going to call a ds down here? And we already know what our equation is and how our variables stack up in a generic case. So the next part is really easy. We just have to figure out what all of these variables correspond to in this problem and then just simply solve the equation. OK, so let's do that. So let's figure out what we need to know. So what do we not know currently? So we know what mu naught 
is because that's just a constant. We know what I is because it's given in the problem 2.46. We know what the magnitude of ds is because it says that the length is 2 centimeters. Uh, do we know what big R is? Do we know what big R is? Uh, well, let's figure out what all of these things are in this context. So what we're going to do is actually take this piece and we're going to scoot it over kind of to, we're going to turn it around a little bit. Actually, let's see if I can do this in paint. Um, I might, it might steal a little bit of my other piece, but it would be really cool if I could simply rotate this. Yes, okay, perfect. This is exactly what I wanted to show. So this is uh, gonna be not entire, actually no, it's pretty good, that's pretty good about what we want. Okay, so what I did is I just rotated this over here to the side. You can see that this DS is pointing in the same direction as this little DS, and the, here's point P and here's point P. So let's label here on this diagram what all the parts are. So here we can see that this five meters is big R, we can see that the distance between that little ds and our point p, which is here, um, perhaps I should label that point p, this is going to be our little r. Our distance between ds and r, this is going to be our s. Okay, and we already know the direction of b, and we already know the direction of the current. Perhaps I'll just write that in here. The current is flowing this direction. That's what we use the right-hand rule for. So now that we've corresponded this, I'm actually going to get rid of this because I want to make sure that we have enough space. All right. Now all we have to do is plug and chug with the variables that we know. So let's just write this in with the numbers because we actually don't have to do any trigonometry here because we're given all of the information that we need. So db, oops, I didn't have my pen on, db equals mu naught times i, which is 2.46 amps times uh, the magnitude of ds, which is 2 centimeters. So because we need to keep these in SI units, I'm going to write 0.02 meters. That's important to get the right magnitude. Times r. Remember, r is this, this part. So that's the 5 meters. Over, all over, 4 pi times s squared. So that's 3 squared plus r squared. That's 5 squared all to the 3 halves, okay, and this is just going to be the magnitude of dB because we've already figured out the direction that's in the negative k hat direction. So let me take out my handy dandy calculator and type that in. So mu naught times 2.46 times 0.02 times 5 all over 4 pi times 3 squared plus 5 squared to the 3 halves. Oops, it's telling me I'm missing that and what do I get? I get dB equals 1.241 times 10 to the negative 10 Teslas and we know so this is the magnitude and we know the direction is equal in the negative k hat direction. So that is how you solve this problem. Alternatively, um, and I think that when Dave posted the answer key, the way that he did this was instead of going through the somewhat complicated derivation using uh, sine of theta and sine of phi, he simply used unit vectors to cancel out uh, various parts and then figure out the direction, uh, conclude the direction was in the negative k hat direction from there. Um, and that you'd use R and S here. But I think that this is a somewhat more intuitive way. Uh, yeah, so hopefully that this video has been helpful for you in understanding how to do this problem.